Great to see everybody on the weekend. I'm John Zadar, and this is On Top and Hot, where we like to discuss hot OTC and penny stocks. Now, I'm a day trader. I trade penny stocks all through the day, and I'm always looking for heat in the stocks. Now, there's a lot of way to look for heat, folks. You can be going through the news. You can be going through the filings. There's a ton of those. That's a ton of reading. That's a lot of work. Not to mention all the judgment calls you got to make. What's hot and what's not. Then you've got the way I like to look for heat. I go to the charts. I like to do charting. So I go to charts and I look for volume coming in or breakout setup or strong surges. That's definitely a good way to find hot penny stocks. Then you match that up to the press releases or the filings. But there is another way. And I love this way. This is how I started trading initially because I didn't know what stocks were running and what stocks weren't until I started focusing on the trades instead of the volume. Volume tells you how many shares are moving, which is really good, but it's not informative enough. You don't know how many people it took to make those shares move. 10 million shares could have been one big buy, or it could have been 100 small buys. It's a big difference. You could be trading with only one other person. You're not going to get a lot of price activity that way. But if you're trading with 100 other people, there's a very strong likelihood that that stock is going to run. So where do you find this information? Right here at the otcmarkets.com website. They've got lots of information here. And we're going to focus in real quickly on how you can find stocks that are hot based on, let's say, how many people are trading it. It really is how many trades, but trades are very representative of how many people. So right here at the otcmarkets.com website, Come right there to current market. You can use closing summary, but I prefer current market. Click this button and it's going to bring you to this page here. Now this shows you the most active OTC stocks. We're not looking at penny stocks. We're looking at all OTC stocks, which there are 12,278 of. And this is showing you the most active OTC stocks across the entire market. You can look at advancers, decliners, as day traders, we're looking for advancers. So just jump here in the middle. You can choose if you want to look at stocks over a dollar or over a nickel. I like to look at all of them. I don't want to miss anything. So click that all button right there. Then click more. Now it is going to dedicate the entire page to only advancers, stocks taking gains. This is every stock on the entire OTC market. Right there is your biggest gainer, SRSCQ. She had 18 trades with 11,000 shares, did $111 worth of business. She had almost, <laughs> almost a million percent gains and she's at a penny. All right, first thing you need to know, folks, is don't pay any heed to these double black diamonds. These are stocks that went to the expert market because they failed to keep up with their financial filings. Once they get their financial filings caught up, they'll come back onto the market. That's the only reason they're on the expert market. Not a big problem, but it is a problem. So we can't trade them. Marketers, brokers can trade them behind the scenes, but us average investors, we can't trade OTC markets, pre-market, after-market, and we can't trade expert markets. But everything else is open for us. So what I'm doing, I'm coming over here, and I am particularly looking at this column right here, trades. And I want to find stocks that have lots of trades. Now, Two years ago, when I was using this page religiously, I was finding stocks that were doing over a thousand trades a day. No problem. Now, we're lucky to get stocks over 100, 200, 300. Those are stocks you want to pay attention to. Look here. Let's find a pink. NoHo. Ticker NOHO at 0001. Says it went up 9,900%. What they're telling you is it's lost two zeros. It was down at 501 came up to triple zero one. The only way you can be on the open market is at triple zero one. Now, overnight, a price can be yanked down under triple zero one, and marketers and brokers are trading them. You and I cannot because they're too low, even though they're on the open market. We can't get them at that price. But by market open, they got to be back up to triple zero one. So, this one had two trades right there, folks. That could be two people, 
Could be one person made two purchases. Who's to know? Either case, two or one, that's not a lot of people. Here we got 12 trades. Could be 12 people. Could be six. We're getting more people, but still, that's not a crowd. But what about that one right there? Oh, all right. All right, it is HCMC 0001. All right, she did have a lot of trades, but you've got a criteria here. I don't look at stocks at 0001. That's not my buy zone. 001, that's where I really start to look. I will go down to 0005, but there better be a bloody good reason for it. So this stock is too cheap, but she had a lot of people around it. She traded about 15 million shares, but at that price, that's like $1,000 yeah, $1, because you can get a million shares for 100 bucks. So the rest of these, very low numbers, right? We've got a 75 right here. Now click this more, and every time you click that more button, it will just keep kicking down from the biggest percentage gain down. I normally go down to 30%, but you can go all the way to the floor. It will just keep going. 12,000 stocks deep. It will keep going. I just normally go down to 30%, but you can go anywhere you want. Find an underdog. Find someone who's getting 500 trades that hasn't moved yet. Getting a lot of volume, it just hasn't moved. That's called accumulation. That's when it's going sideways on the chart, and then all of a sudden, boom, it breaks out. So let's scroll back up here to where we were. Oh, I saw 400 there, right there, 400. All right, this is Bleg. I am going to be covering this in a video this weekend, so we're going to be taking a look at this. But this is normally what I would do. I find it, whoa, 456 trades, could be 456 people. Cut it in half. Each person bought in twice. All right, so we're looking at 225 people. That's a crowd. If you go to a movie and you see four people standing in that line and 250 people or 125 or 400 people in that line, which movie do you think is better? I'm not saying which line you want to stand in. I'm saying which movie do you think is better? Probably the one with the crowd around it. So this is what I look for, crowd activity. So we had almost a million shares move, 100% gains. We are over double zero one. It's worth it. So I'm going to click this and I'm going to open this window up. And what I'm interested in, why is it running? I want to find the catalyst. There's a lot of information we can look at, but folks, we're day traders. Day traders aren't in a stock long enough for anything to happen normally for it to affect us. So I don't need to know a whole lot about the management. I don't need to know a whole lot about fundamentals. What I need to know is, is there heat in the chart? Is there heat in the news? Is the stock price moving? Is there momentum? Is there attention being given to it by investors? This is what I'm interested in. I don't even care if the CEO got arrested today for drunk driving. It isn't going to make a difference in the stock normally. Things can happen, it does happen, but in most cases, you're in and out before anything matters. So we only want to know why is it running? Is there enough oomph to keep it going? So the first thing I'm going to do when I run over here is I'm going to look at the news and I'm going to see if there's any recent news. Up here, this is news just for the company. Down here, they'll bring in news for the company and other companies as well. I see it as all strictly this company, so it makes it pretty easy. Most current news is going to be at the top. So we had a piece of news come out on the 7th. Now, it's not always the most recent piece of news. Take a look, see what's going on. You know, we go back a month, the company ret retired 600 million common shares. The company ret retires <laughs> 1 billion common shares. That's 1.6 billion shares they've just retired in the last month. That's hot. That shareholder value right there. Branded Legacy secures 1 million line of credit affirms no reverse split. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. This thing is hot. Lots going on. But you can jump into those if you want to read them, see what's going on. That never hurts. But I'm just looking for catalyst because I'm day trading. I want to catch a stock right now. So I don't have a lot of time to be wasting doing due diligence. So I'm going to fly over here to the SEC filings. No, we don't have anything since 2004. If we had like an 8K or a Form 4, there could be an insider buy that just happened. That could have it running. An 8K is a material change. Anything can be in that. A merger, an acquisition, a reverse split, a forward split. 
you don't know but you open it up and just at the very top it's a very short form it'll say material uh, change of some sort or it'll say uh, change in management of directors ah, you're out of that one real quick so we're just jumping in and jumping out just to see if anything's hot now this looked hot we saw lots of good news over here so I'm gonna look at the share count while I'm here real quick I can see Ooh, we got a lot of shares 400 million roughly that is pretty close to the float may not be exact but it's good enough for what we're doing and then maybe see what the relative volume is and I'd see it was hot look over here I've got my green ticks I've got independent directors tells me that they're thinking about uplisting all looks good I've got a hot stock so then I'm gonna jump back to my list and I'm gonna look for another one oh, there's a 32 but that's not hot you know there's 32 16 people eh, not as many as I'd like 334 we'll take that could be 150 people could be 334 people that's a good trading crowd we have 63,000 shares yeah we do must be more expensive stock it is a dollar 59 this is Sioli I'm not familiar with this company they did 71 percent gains today so we jump into this real quick now we're gonna just do it the way I would normally do it dive into the news I've got no news nothing here since 2022 checking my disclosures what nothing since 2017 interesting all right I'd look at the volume see what sort of activity relatively speaking well there's a lot of extra volume she's jumped from 3,000 to 63,000 I mean you're looking at uh, 20 times her normal volume and I haven't found a reason so not that I'm gonna do it but what I would do the first place I would go would be Twitter and I would put in a dollar sign and that ticker and look see if anybody has said anything on Twitter millions all right hundreds thousands of eyeballs out there looking too. you might as well tap into their brains then you could just go to Google take the name of the company take the name of the ticker copy that drop it over there in Google now if you're gonna go to Google folks let me show you something here just so you don't waste your time there's a lot of information you want to narrow the band down so we're gonna throw that's not what we want we're gonna grab up that ticker and that name of that company and then we're gonna throw it in over here and the first thing I want to do is use filters there's too much information I want news so I'm gonna go over to news then I'm gonna hit my tools button here and I'm gonna sort by date so I can see the most current information at the top forget all this sorting one month ago um, oh I didn't get all the companies so let me make sure that's in there there we go sometimes you do have to put uh, quotation marks around the name of your company especially if they use a lot of common words like uh, hot technology you know you're gonna get a lot of different things hot technology ink quotation marks so now we've narrowed it down I don't see anything here since a month and it doesn't even look to be about them now you may want to take away the ticker that may screw up articles um, we're still not seeing anything so this one's a dead fish I don't know what to think about this I would have to do more deeper due diligence I don't have time I'm a day trader I need a stock now I'm looking now scrolling on back there's a 34 T A I P Y ooh $14 stock not a penny stock this is every stock on the entire market 62 27 25 boy these are low numbers 71 N N A X to 26 million over uh, double zero one we could jump into that real quick right could be something good uh, nothing since 2022 and no news down here disclosures we have a my most recent quarterly financial they were late on it not 10 <laughs> NT 10 Q says we are not filing our quarterly report on time this will buy them five days they did this on the 15th had it out on the 20th so I would quickly dive into this and I know pretty much what most of these look like so I'm gonna look down here at their total assets and I'm gonna see oh they lost assets from December of last year to September now so over the last nine months they lost about 25 million dollars is it millions 
Um, I can't. No, I don't think we add any zeros. No. So it's just thousands. All right, they lost 25,000. Makes a difference. Look and see if there's zeros up there, folks. We got no zeros here, so that's just thousands. So they lost 25,000 in assets, and they took on about uh, 230,000 in liabilities. Ooh, revenues. From uh, the last three months of this year, they were at 25,000. Wow, look at the drop in revenues there, folks. From 331,000 a year ago to 25,000, just a three month period. And the same thing with the nine month, they went from 630 down to 206. So their revenues have dropped a lot. Now there is gonna be a lot of information in here and it'll all be black like that. You can look up stuff like operations if you use your search bar, right? Bring up your search and put in operations if you want to see what the company's doing. And then just go through it. There's lots of things you can look up. Mergers. Um, and it'll tell you every single merger in here. Every single deal. Everything. Everybody's invested in the company. They can vary from company to company. But my bottom line here is... Get used to reading 10Ks and 10Qs. They've got all the information you're ever going to want. It may be in a news press. It may not have ever been put out in the news press. It may be in a filing, but where? Where are you going to be looking all over the place? A 10Q has it all in one place. Get used to reading them, folks. They'll save you a lot of time. All right, jumping back to our list. See, I abandoned my list. Now I got to open it all up. You got to remember to use the right click if you don't want to lose your page. So where were we at? We were down at about 70 there. And what's the percentage? 33%. There's a 127. I would be willing to look at that. A million shares, 30% gains, 11 cents, BLQC. Jump into this quickly. Time's a Russian. I know the day's going on right now. So I'm just running through here. Here's one that came out on the 16th. Block Quarry seeks to propel operational growth, appoints Laura Davis as Chief Operating Officer and Sam Echobar as Director of Ground Operations. So they're changing management, and we haven't had anything recent since August. That is the most recent piece of news, change of management. Always check the bottom. They won't always be the same. Sometimes there's extra news in one place. I don't know why that is. Uh, what's this? This came out, see, right there. This came out on the 8th of November. There's that one we just read. Well, this 8th of November isn't up here. It's totally missing. You see what I mean? So you've got to be redundant in your due diligence. Look in multiple places. Block Quarry Core announces favorable settlement agreement. Regains possession of Gaffney mining assets. Reveals plans for current operation debt consolidation. That sounds interesting. They got something back. A fight is over. They won the fight. And they've got plans and they're consolidating debt. Lots of information in that news press would be worth at least diving in and glancing over, seeing what's going on. Then we'll run over here to our disclosures. Nothing since 2019. And they did just have a quarterly report come out. So you're going to want to look at that too. Jump into that real quick and just check information out. Pink Current. Want to make sure they're current, verified profile, verified transfer agent, independent directors. Looks like they have plans on uplisting. This would be another stock that I would consider looking at the chart now. You know, I see she's looking good here. We've got Catalyst. We've got Run. We've got a crowd. Do we got a hot chart? That's going to be my final determination right there. So this is what I like to call the crowd factor, folks. You can go through all the news. You're going to be reading a lot of news, and while you're reading, stuff is happening. The day is progressing. Things are running. Now, I like to use the scans. They tell you what's running hot, running now. But they're telling you in volume, only share volume. Really, folks, you want to know how many people are trading it. And this is the only place I have found for the OTC market where trades are told. This, to me, is solid gold information. It makes the volume count more relative. You understand what's going on here. Hopefully, this helps you, folks. Remember what I say all the time. <laughs> the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.